I want to make the ears move and the eyes move. And I think I like this example because it shows the way that we often learn new things. We start with something that we're familiar with, we're interested in. Like Ipsy started with drawing, and then you add a little something new. So this is one of our first programs, putting the blocks together to create a scratch program, just make the eyes move and the ears move. But she really found this exciting. So she continued to use Scratch, and she started learning more programming techniques to do more types of animations. A little while later, she created this project called Lemonade Time. We're having some problem, I'm gonna try to get it working. In this program, you use the arrow key to move this animal, the otter. And the otter has to move around and gather the ingredients to make lemonade, to get lemons and sugar and water. And you can get different types of advice or tips by asking other characters that you meet. We can find a lemon and you can ask the bee for advice. And you can get coins for buying sugar. So this is a much more complex project than Ipsy was working on. And Ipsy shared this project with the online community, and other people really enjoyed seeing what Ipsy was working on. As you can see, 17,000 people viewed Ipsy's project. Almost 2,000 people said they loved Ipsy's project. 88 people remixed Ipsy, Ipsy's project. That means they took Ipsy's project and made changes to some of the computer code or some of the images to make their own version. And we see that's the way many people use Scratch. It's often easiest to start with someone's project and start to make small changes to it and make it your own. 1800 made comments giving feedback and suggestions and encouragement to Ipsy. And we can tell that Ipsy was reading the comments because if we look in her notes, she says, due to popular demand, the otter walks a little faster now. So evidently there were suggestions to make changes in her program. And like any good designer, she paid attention to her audience and made changes, make the otter walk a little faster. And many people really liked the artwork that Ipsy was doing. And they asked her, could we see more of your artwork? We'd like to take your artwork and use it in our own projects. So if they start making projects like this one, called Ipsy Studio, and she put a variety of her projects, a variety of her characters here, her artwork, to allow other people to use. And she put a note that says, you can edit these as much as you want, but you must give me credit if you're going to use it. So she was learning how to be a good citizen in an online community, to share with other people, but also to say you should give me credit if you use my work. So this is the way an open source community works. So she was learning through Scratch how to be a good member of an open source community. At first, Ipsy wasn't such a good collaborator because she was upset when people used her artwork. But then over time she realized that when everybody shares, everybody benefits. Because she could share from other people's projects and other people could use hers. Over time, in addition to sharing her artwork, she also shared some of what she learned about coding. Because although she started without much interest in coding, she became quite an expert coder, an expert programmer. So here's a project that she did. It's a tutorial project for showing how to make scrolling backgrounds, to how to make the background move. It's not so easy to make scrolling backgrounds in Scratch. Actually, we should try to make it easier. But she figured out how to make it the scrolling background, and she went to share her knowledge with others. So she had a whole tutorial showing how to do it, and she wrote comments in her code so that other people could make use of her code and remix her code to make their own scrolling background. 
You know, and I think that this is a way that, you know, if you want to share her knowledge with others, and we see this is happening a lot in the Strat community. And it took us by surprise, because when we first developed Strat, we figured that we would make some tutorials, and maybe some teachers would make tutorials. We never imagined so many kids would make tutorials. But in fact, there are thousands and thousands of kids who are putting tutorials online to share their knowledge with others. We were really excited to see how children like Ipsy were, make, were creating and sharing the Scratch website. So in fact, we reached out and we talked to Ipsy. At first, we just saw her product on the website. We were interested, so we reached out to talk to her. And this is the way she talked about her experience with Scratch. She said, I never thought I could do the coding part. I thought I could do art. But I'd have to wait until I'm a grown up and hire somebody to code it for me. When I tried Scratch, it was like, hey, I can actually do this myself. And we really liked hearing this from Ipsy because it showed that she'd become empowered by Scratch, that she felt that she could create things, that she would be someone who could you know, make things with new technologies. And that's what we were really looking for in Scratch. We wanted people to feel a new way about themselves. As we thought about you know, Ipsy's case, we saw that Ipsy was learning many different things as she was using Scratch, which are very much aligned with what our goals are in Scratch. We saw that as Ipsy was using Scratch, of course she was developing her thinking. And that's why many people are encouraging children to learn to code, is they start to write programs they learn about algorithmic ideas and how to be more systematic in their thinking. And for sure, that was one thing that Ipsy was learning. She was definitely learning to reason systematically and to think algorithmically. And that's something that she could use in many different types of problem-solving situations. So that was certainly a good thing she was learning. But that wasn't all that she was learning. At the same time, Ipsy was also developing her voice. And by that I mean she was learning how to express herself, how to share her ideas with other people. And to us, that's really important. I do think that this connects with the theme that I know that High Tech Park has used in their uh, programming activities, the idea of programming as a second literacy. With traditional literacies, an important part of literacy is being able to express your ideas. So when you learn to write, it's not just to get a job done, although of course writing is very useful in many tasks, but also writing is a way you can share your ideas with other people, to, have a, to feel that you have a voice in society. And we want to have the same thing with programming. When children learn programming, we want them to feel that they're developing their voice, that they're not just using someone else's program and clicking and browsing on the computer, but they can express their ideas with new technology the same way you can express your ideas with writing. With writing, you just express your ideas through text. With coding and programming, you can express your ideas through dynamic, interactive projects that you create. And finally, we saw that Ipsy was developing her identity. And by that I mean she started to see herself in a new way. Too many children grow up feeling that they can't really make a difference in the world. And I think as Ipsy learned that she could create her own programs and she could create her own projects that other people wanted to use and other people enjoyed, she started to feel empowered that she could be a full and active contributor in the society. And to us, that's really important because we want children to grow up not just feeling that they need to fit into society, but that they can make changes in society, that they can be contributors to society. And I think that's one of the ways that Ipsy started to develop a new identity <laughs> through Scratch. That it wasn't just that she was learning computational concepts, although of course she was learning those, but she was learning a new way to see that she could be a contributor in today's society. So, why is it that Ipsy was able to develop these new abilities through Scratch? I think it's because some of the ways that we design Scratch, Scratch is not just the same as any programming language. We thought a lot in developing Scratch how we, how we could develop a programming language that could help children develop their thinking 
and develop their voice, and develop their identity. And to do that, we designed Scratch based on four guiding principles. So I want to say a little bit about that. In English, the four guiding principles all start with the letter P. It's projects, passion, peers, and play. So as we develop Scratch, we want to make sure that children can use Scratch to make their own projects. Many times when children are introduced to programming, they're just given a problem to solve and they get a right or wrong answer and they go on to the next problem. And if you do that, you might learn some specific computational -like concepts. But if you just solve some problems that someone else has given to you, you're not going to develop your voice. When you develop a project, you learn how to start with an idea and develop it and adapt it and change it and revise it so you can create a project that you can share with others. And we think that approach of learning how to create a project is very important in everything that people do. Learn how to start with an idea and carry it through. As adults, we work on projects all the time. Whether you're a journalist writing an article or a parent creating a birthday project for your children, whatever we do is a type of project. So we want children to grow up with the idea they know how to work on projects. So that's a one core part of Scratch. We also wanted Scratch to let children work on projects that they were passionate about, they were connected to their interests. Because one thing that we've seen over and over is that people are willing to work longer and harder and persist in the face of challenges where they're working on something that they really care about something that they're passionate about. So with Scratch, we didn't want to have all children work on the same type of project. Because children have different interests. They all want to work on different types of things. So we made Scratch so you could work, so you, the children could create many different types of things. Stories, games, animations, simulations, interactive newsletters, guided tours. Children create so many different types of projects with Scratch. 